Oh, what wow is the color pink? Butterflies dance as the winds blink. Look now in March, the tree sticks lean, shielding Kyoto's landscape, all pink, little green. Pink is the color of Sakura, so awesome. Can you guess the name? You're right, it's Cherry Blossom. Wonderstruck today with these hues. Today's conversation gonna feature cholinomimetic natural alkaloid drugs. Welcome all to Is Pharmacology Difficult podcast. I'm your host Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD Pharmacology and this is the audio hub to get the best simplified basic tips, strategies, methods and lots of ideas to learn better understand better and make your concepts crystal clear if you really find and if there's a question hovering in your mind is pharmacology difficult lend me your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge let's break the ice with pilocarpine the origin is plant origin in the blades of pilocarpus species. It's basically a muscarinic agent, though it does exhibit nicotinic effects too. Its structure is a tertiary amine, not easily hydrolyzed with acetylcholine esterase. Being uncharged, it can enter the central nervous system with great ease Usually, it's known for its ophthalmic uses. To account its actions in the eye, it leads to fast meiosis, ciliary muscle contraction, and resultant accommodation spasm. It also increases secretions like sweat, saliva, and tears. Though it's not very selective in its action, this action finds use in enhancing the salivation in xerostomia patients which are undergoing the neck and head irradiation. Similar use is found in the Sjogren syndrome, defamed for dry mouth and no tears at all. The cardiac effects, they are again little complicated. At low doses, muscarinic role is dominant, causing fall in the blood pressure, while at high doses, the ganglia, they are stimulated, leading to high blood pressure. The main therapeutic advantage, as I already narrated, is in the eye disease, the glaucoma. Pilocarpine is considered the drug of choice to rapidly lower down the intraocular pressure in both open angle and closed angle glaucoma i'm talking about the emergency situations it untangles the trabecular meshwork surrounding the canal of schlem and decent drainage of aqueous humor provides quick relief this relief can last for around four to eight hours pilocarpine causes meiosis which is useful to reverse the atropine midriasis also. Let us get to know the wishy-washy aspect of the drug too. When administered as eye drops, it may cause initial burning or stinging sensation in the eyes. And sometimes there may be accompanied painful spasm of accommodation. Sometimes blurring of vision, night blindness and Pain in the brows are also observed complaints. Pulmonary edema is a hazardous adverse effect. If the poisoning pursues, it is exhibited as extension of the cholinergic sign and symptoms like diaphoresis. Now let me interrupt at present moment to give you the definition of diaphoresis. Diaphoresis refers to the excessive sweating in the context of the prevalent environment and the activity level. It's actually a symptom of the full body and not a part of the body. And this term is often used as an alternative 
for secondary hyperhidrosis. Got it? So diaphoresis is very crystal clear term now. Let's carry on with our discussion. Another sign and symptom is the salivation in excess. If a person consumes muscarine containing inocyte species of mushrooms, then similar effects are seen. Now that is one similarity worth mentioning at this moment, right? And now comes the golden question. What to do to counteract this toxicity? My reply to you is to administer atropine via the parenteral route at doses potent enough that can cross the blood-brain barrier. Now, let us pick up the muscarine for discussion from our list. But in reality, where is muscarine picked up from? I mean, where is muscarine derived from? Just wonder, have you heard of Amanita muscaria? For your utter terror, it's one of the poisonous species of mushrooms and finds no medicinal use. But it is credited for the origin of the muscarine. That's the truth. Mushroom poisoning. Another term is mycetism. It is an interesting topic in itself. I do agree and I vilify anocybe and clidocybe species of mushrooms in this particular regard. And just to revise, parenteral atropine, intramuscular administration preferably, is the therapy of choice. Anocybe species is responsible for muscarine or early mushroom poisoning as you call it. The harmful effects they appear in about an hour and atropine quickly resolves the whole problem. Amanita muscaria and psilocybe species, they contain mussy mole and psilocybe bean respectively as hallucinogenic compounds which cause hallucinogenic type of mushroom poisoning. And its treatment is still a mystery. Yep, atropine can't help here. Just make that clear. Amanita phylloidus and gallerina species of mushrooms, they hamper the protein synthesis and they cause late poisoning with significant damage to organs like kidney, liver, gut, etc. Now, up to an extent, Thioctic acid, it can serve as an antidote along with a lot of supportive treatment. That was the whole account of muscarine and mushroom poisoning. Mycetism as you call it. Next what? Let's pick up aracoline from our list of cholinergic alkaloid drugs. It has its origin from Erica catechu, the beetle nut. It exhibits combined muscarinic and nicotinic actions and finds a therapeutic value up to very minor extent in the treatment of central nervous system disorders like dementia etc. And to be very frank, it is not used in present era at all. Now let's see, what all drugs are left to be discussed? Well. These are sevimeline, tremorine, and oxotremorine. Sevimeline is of therapeutic importance to treat xerostomia, which is observed in patients receiving chemotherapy or in patients of Sjogren's syndrome. Now, it may show visual defects and diarrhea as its side effects. Tremorine converts to active oxotremorine and both find laboratory and research tool use in animals to trigger Parkinsonism. I hope these are brief accounts of sevimeline, tremorine and oxotremorine enough for your knowledge at present time. The clock is signaling to bring the curtains down. Do you want to have a little general knowledge quick round? 
The thematic center of the day was cherry blossom, a flowering tree symbol of renewal and hope. It marks the dawn of spring in Japan and forms some highly rated fragrant perfumes. I will attempt to convey the iconic Kudile, a comprehensive view from my audiogram to you. For all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast, do visit www.spharmacologydifficult.com where you can also sign up for a free monthly e-newsletter of mine. It actually contains a lot of updates about medical sciences and drug information updates and my podcast updates also. You can follow me on different social media handles like Twitter, Insta, Facebook and LinkedIn. They all are with the same name is Pharmacology Difficult. If you are listening for the first time, do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode. Stay tuned. Do rate and review on iTunes, Apple Podcast. Stay safe, stay happy, stay enlightened. Thank you.